Good morning. Is it still morning or is it close to the afternoon? Good morning and good afternoon. I'm Grace Scalucci, the Executive Director of NOACA. Welcome to Forging the Future of Transportation, NOACA's 2018 annual meeting. We're very pleased that you've joined us today. In fact, this is the greatest attendance we've ever had. We have hit almost 350 people. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here with us. We have a very full and informative program for you, but before we, get, we begin, I want to recognize certain people. First, I want to recognize and thank the NOACA Board of Directors for their dedicated service. Please stand, board members, as we applaud. On a personal note, I would like to thank my board and especially the executive committee for their continual support and direction in moving the agency forward. I'm ever grateful to have such a group of smart, hardworking elected and public officials who really care about making their communities and our region a better place. These folks not only care though about making their communities better, they take action to make them better. Next, I'd like to recognize the elected officials here today who are not on our Board of Trustees. Because there are so many of you, I'm going to ask you to please stand as a group. So welcome. Welcome to all of our elected officials, and thanks for taking the time out to be here. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the NOACA staff for their time and effort to do all of the work that needs to be done to make NOACA succeed. They're the best team any executive director could ever ask for. And I'd like to recognize them for their excellent service to the agency and the region. Staff, please stand. And finally, I'd like to recognize and thank our many sponsors. They include, on the regional champion level, CT Consultants, Cuyahoga County, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, and WSP. Our regional stewards are AECOM, Cleveland Metro Parks, DLZ, the Greater Cleveland RTA, the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District, and OHM Advisors. Our regional partners are Albeck Gherkin, Bauer Griffin, Crawford Murphy and Tilly, First Suburbs Consortium, Lake Tran, Mannix Smith Group, Michael Baker International, MKSK, MS Consultants, the Ohio Turnpike and Infrastructure Commission, the United Way of Greater Cleveland, and Zaremba Homes. And finally, our table sponsors are Cleveland Neighborhood Progress and the Northeast Ohio Sustainable Communities Consortium, or Vibrant Neo. I know that was a lot of names, um, but I wanted to take the time out to read each one because I wanted to point out these are not nameless, faceless organizations that are sponsoring us. These are our friends and our neighbors, people that live and work in our communities and like us, they partner with us, they work very hard to make our communities stronger and more livable. So let's give them a round of applause, too. So to everyone else, thank you so much for joining us here today. The annual meeting is a time to learn about important work that we do at NOACA. We give you a better idea of our mission and recent accomplishments at this meeting. We produced an annual report and in fact, it's called Forward 50, which highlights these activities. But because NOACA is also celebrating 50 years of planning for Greater Cleveland this year, if you flip the annual report over, it's a flip book, you'll see a retrospective. It is a timeline of reflecting on the past, which features highlights of all of NOACA's 50 years. As you may have already discovered, you'll find a copy at your seats. 
And if you haven't already done so, please make sure you try our Hyperloop virtual reality experience after the program outside. It is now my great privilege to introduce the Honorable Armin Budish, NOACA's current board president and Cuyahoga County Executive, who is going to say a few words. But first, let me say a few words about him. Armin Budish took office in January 2015 and immediately set out to improve the quality of life for Cuyahoga County residents by creating jobs and bringing about efficient and effective government. As the executive, Mr. Budish is committed to creating economic growth through training, aligning job skills to job opportunities, and expanding and growing business opportunities. In short, Mr. Budish believes we must think big, use technology, be bold, and take some responsible risks, quote unquote. I want to thank Mr. Budish for Cuyahoga County sponsorship of the annual meeting, which included the use of this beautiful facility today. Please help me welcome Cuyahoga County Executive Armin Budish. Hello, everybody. It's an honor for me to serve this year as president of the board of NOACA. NOACA serves as the transportation, air, and water quality planning and coordinating agency for the Northeast Ohio region which is made up of Cuyahoga, Geauga, Lake, Lorraine, and Medina counties. I have to uh, just take a moment to congratulate our executive director, Grace Gallucci, uh, her staff, and the entire NOACA board for the truly great work that they do. And as Grace mentioned, at your seats is the uh, annual report, which gives you a good idea of some of the things that, in fact, NOACA has been working on uh, NOACA may be the least known, most impactful organization in the region. Uh, so I want to thank NOACA for all they do. Um, also at your seats, by the way, are these little blue things, which I have no idea what they are, but I'm sure they're worth hundreds of dollars, so take them home and enjoy them. I can't accept it because I'm an elected official. As a major part of NOACA's job, NOACA decides how federal transportation dollars will be spent within the region. Approximately $55 million is distributed annually. So what are our priorities? Historically, an overwhelming portion of NOACA's federal funds has gone to road and bridge projects. Only about 15% goes to public transit projects. But public transportation is also vitally important to our region's economic health. The U.S. Department of Transportation recognizes that public transportation is critical to provide citizens with mobility and access to employment, community resources, medical care, and recreational opportunities. It benefits those who choose to ride like our growing millennial population, as well as those who have no other choice. For example, according to the Fund for Our Economic Future, 56% of the people living in the central neighborhood of Cleveland do not have a car, not even one car. Now think about that statistic. Without public transit, no car means no job. No job means no car. Without robust public transportation, the bridge to equity and opportunity in our community narrows to a single lane. Public transportation is a key to economic development. We can bring all the businesses we want to the county and the region, but if people can't get to those good jobs, then we have not succeeded. NOACA's research and reporting shows that job hubs exist in various locations, 
throughout the county and the region, often miles away from the neighborhoods where potential employees live. These are people who want and are needed for those jobs. Did you know that our region is one of the least accessible in terms of people being able to get to jobs? This is a real serious problem. An efficient and effective public transit system is essential to enable people looking for work to get to the good jobs that exist in our region. And let's not overlook other benefits of public transit. Benefits like the reduction of road congestion and wasted travel times, the reduction of air pollution, the reduction of energy and oil consumption, all of which benefit everyone in the community, not just transit riders. In fact, emissions are the single biggest contributors to climate change. Public transit is a lifeline to our kids' future. Despite the obvious benefits, public transit has been woefully underfunded by the state of Ohio. In 2000, the state spent about $43 million on public transportation. This year, the state will spend about $7 million. That's $7 million for the entire state of Ohio. We're the seventh largest state in the country, and we're the seventh largest spender on highways. But Ohio ranks 46th in per capita spending on public transit at about 63 cents per person. For comparison, Michigan spends about $26 per person. Pennsylvania spends about $120 per person. And Illinois spends about $275 per person. We're at 63 cents. And the situation's getting worse. With the cuts to the state Medicaid managed care sales tax, RTA lost about $20 million a year. That's likely to result in new and significant cuts to RTA's ability to serve the public. In November, the citizens of Ohio will be electing a new governor, and there's likely to be significant changes in the legislature as well. This gives us the opportunity to change the narrative. But before we can ask the state, or NOACA, or others for help, we need to be prepared to present a new vision and energy to get there. For that reason, I've spoken with Mayor Clough, the new president of the RTA board. Good luck to you. And I've asked Mayor Clough to prepare a comprehensive operational analysis for RTA with a complete reevaluation of how they can best provide service now and in the future. And I believe Mayor Clough agrees. RTA must put a plan in place to show how service can best be provided to millennials who like riding public transit, to people who must have access to a job, and to others in the community who rely on public transit for health care appointments, access to community activities, or recreation. And I'm not talking about just looking at routes and staffing. I'm talking about a complete analysis involving both RTA and the community's needs. And not just for now, but for the future. Let me tell you about my vision for RTA and for public transit generally. First, RTA should provide safe, convenient, and reliable service that people can rely on. Buses and rail should be modernized and comfortable. There's no reason why riding public transit should not be an enjoyable experience. <laughs> Second, RTA should maximize the use of technology. Technology can be employed to adjust rail cars in real time so that some cars don't run empty while others are crowded. Technology can be employed for appointment transportation and other modes of transportation such as Uber, Lyft, and autonomous vehicles may be incorporated into the fabric of our public transit system. Third, public-private partnerships should be maximized. 
For example, businesses located in the Solon Job Hub might join with RTA to provide transportation for employees in the neighborhoods at the start and finish of the workday. And fourth, RTA should extend its regional impact, exploring more extensive collaboration with Lake Tran, Lorain County Transit, and other regional partners. Let's face it, we need a strong RTA and a strong regional transit system. We need to rethink our priorities, and we need to do this quickly. We as a community, and us in the audience, community leaders who are here, must do all we can to help RTA develop a comprehensive plan to take our system to the next level. I hear one applause there. NOACA has a great transportation staff and resources and has offered its services to help RTA with developing its comprehensive plan. Once we have a comprehensive plan, then I am sure that we as a community can find the appropriate funding. And as RTA succeeds, the entire county and, regional will, and region will Thank you all very much for all that you do. My pleasure to be here.